So, uh, this here would be the Dragon Ruler Turbo deck that I took with me to Locals. Uh, while this deck is, uh, gonna end up being irrelevant in a matter of days, uh, I figured I would just show it off to, uh, just go through what I used today and, uh, the shenanigans that I got up to. So, uh, this is, uh, basically the same as, it is pretty much just Mythic Rulers, except with a lot more draw power and a lot less traps. And it also runs a small Light Swan engine as well to help with, uh, getting stuff into the grave and, uh, just basically deck thinning. So, I'll just go straight into the list. Uh, we have our four Dragon Rulers standard. Uh, I don't think I need to say anything about these. Uh, two Mythic Water and one Tree. Um, to be perfectly honest, I feel like a second tree might have n might not have actually come amiss in this build because I'm not running maining um uh, Barbaros, so I feel like uh, the with it, I feel like with only one tree that the uh, rank eight plays were a bit situational in the first game, so it's just eh I don't know I would probably in thinking about it I reckon it probably would be worth it maybe attack so. Um, if I do build this at some point in the future, then I'll definitely give that a crack. Uh, tuners run the one debris dragon. Uh, triple white stone, because just going to have the targets for all of the draw power cards that we run. Uh, two flamble guards. And to segue into the vanillas. And triple blue eyes white dragon. Once again, uh, just targets for the draw power. The original uh, template for this deck... Uh, I believe was running, I think, like, um, one Mythic Water, and I think only, like, uh, four or five uh, Consonance targets. I like to have a whole bunch of targets for my draw power, just to decrease the chances of them being dead. Hence why I um, ran a whole bunch more. Uh, having said that, I only ran the four Light Swan monsters, in the form of Double Minerva, uh, one Lila, and the Gragoneth. Uh, the Minerva being a tune that just allows you to go for your uh, Leo plays, which is really, really strong. Um, the original deck actually had Double Riker, but I opted out of those instead, and instead put in a Lila and a Gragoneth. Uh, Lila just gets around the first turn, uh, first ga game one, um, uh, Vanities and whatnot. And the theory behind Gragoneth is that you can dump it with the Dragon Shrine, uh, thus in making your uh, Minerva search live. You can normal summon your Minerva and get... Uh, White Stone to hand, and then you can then immediately pitch it with cards of consonants and continue to go off. And being an additional little bit of food for um, Dragon Rulers as well is quite nice. Um, I almost actually had this off for my one... I, om I almost used this for my one Black Rose play, but uh, upon milling it, I soul charged it and uh, had it run into a bottomless. Because I had um, cause I actually bricked game one against that Burning Abyss. I opened a uh, double recharge, double... Uh, white stone, and I was going to soul charge to get that back and then just use one of the white stones to make a black rose, but it didn't work out like that. Uh, so for the spells, we've got the triple trade in, uh, triple cards of consonants, and the triple solar recharge. Uh, the recharge was easily the most situational of all the uh, spell, of all the draw power spells. Um, be that as it may, though, uh, I did brick with double consonants. Um, in that one game against the uh, Gugga Gugga Dragon deck, which was kind of annoying, but for the most part, I usually got these two off. It's just the solar recharge with the less targets that was a lot more situational. If I could go back and do it again, I would definitely th throw in a second Lala because, uh, reiterating once again in the um, tournament report, I only got Lala off once throughout the entire event. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, then run the one charge just to get to your. Uh, um, light sword stuff quicker. You don't really care if it gets milled. It is what it is. Uh, three soul charge. The theory behind this was to push the game one win quicker. Um, however, the in the game one, this was actually surprisingly subpar. Um, like I said, our game one against Burning Abyss. I only saw a single copy of this, and and you know what you know what happened made the Dragon Earth got bottom list. So theoretically, our three is actually. Three was actually rather lackluster for me, so um, it's not that big a deal since I don't have to worry about ever running three ever again since I can only ever run the one um, as of a few days from now. So it's fine. Uh, it's just a win more card anyway, so it's not really like it's that necessary in the deck. 
uh, just helps you save food basically. Uh, two Dragon Shrine, I'll probably bump this up to three, although I did open both these and it was kind of eh. You don't really want to want multiples of these because they will clog because you only get one of them per turn, which is kind of annoying. Um, so that's why I'm a bit iffy about running three copies of it. Uh, then run the one Miracle Dig, one Burial, uh, one Foolish, and the one Gold Saka uh, to round out these spells. And then I... Uh, uh, contrary to what is standard in turbo decks, I actually do run the one trap in the form of Treacherous Trap Hole. Uh, this thing uh, was actually rather... This is a, this was actually a pretty decent card. It worked out relatively well. I believe it got MST'd once and got Imperial Tombed once, but overall I was actually quite content with it. I main deck this in anticipation of our Hand and Yangzing matchups uh, because of how reactive it is. Uh, it destroys two monsters on the field, but you can't activate it if you have any traps in your graveyard, uh, which is mitigated by the fact that, that this is the only trap that I run in the uh, main deck. And when I usually side my traps in, I side this out because for obvious reasons. Um, this actually beats uh, Torrential for the list purely because you can make you can chain this to literally any of the other effects in your deck, like a Dragon Ruler or a... Uh, draw power card, and so being able to make it sh make a chain link to um, easily uh, helps a lot in uh, hat matchups since it makes the hands miss timing, and it gets over uh, yang zings and whatnot. It was really really uh, awesome. I didn't go up against them, but the theory is really really nice. So for the uh, extra deck, I run three rank eights in the form of Felgrand, Helio, and Giant Grinder. Uh, Falgram was easily the most commonly seen one. I did see Helio, but I ended up getting it mind controlled, I think game one, and then he dropped title to follow it up and ended up swinging for game, which kind of sucked. Uh, Gimme Puppet, never saw it. It's just one of those sort of situational things. You don't even need the Gimme Puppet in the deck. I'm probably just going to cut it for, um, another Synchro or something. We'll see what happens there. Um, then play Dracosac, Big Eye, and Master of Blades. Um... I actually didn't really intend to play Master of Blades today. Uh, I was actually going to play the second Dracosac, and in theory, in hindsight, it was for b the better and for the worse. Uh, there was a situation where I wish I had the second Dracosac, but the positive, but the thing with Master of Blades is that it against the Burning Abyss matchup, um, they had to go Acid Golem in order, in order to get over this because they couldn't Wing Blast it, and I was just sort of beating down, and I was, and I also did that with um against uh, Hieratic Rulers as well. I had this on the board so that they couldn't Big Eye or Dracosack it. So I just kept swinging at it, and I think at the end of the day, he beat over it with a Scrap Dragon, I think. No, he used the Scrap Dragon to go for something else, and then I just ran over with Master of Blades. No, because I, no, I actually used Dracosack and then beat over him with Master of Blades. So Master of Blades was actually surprisingly good. It's really good because not, cause it, if anything targets it, it just slaughters it. Uh, round, round one for next Exciton. I dropped this once. That was just to get some more damage on board. It, its effect was not at all necessary in any situation. Um, synchros. I played Star Reader. I got this off, I think, once. Uh, Leo. I believe I got this off once as well. Uh, Zorais. I never saw this. Like, I never had any situations where I could go for a level 9 Synchro. Uh, at least not with Blue Eyes. Uh, Stardust. Made this once. It was under freaking macro though, so I only got one negation, which is annoying. Uh, Scrap Dragon, I saw this. Crimson Blader, in theory, would have actually been a, probably a good idea against the Hieratic Ruler matchup in particular, but I didn't really, I didn't really see that. I kind of didn't have the foresight for it to be honest. Uh, one Colossal Fighter. I didn't even think about this. I think that's one of the big problems with me is that I don't think about the possibility of every single monster in my side deck, which kind of sucks. And I play the one Black Rose, which is actually the most situational synchro. You could easily cut it, but the one situation that I had where I went for it, I went for it knowing that I could make the Black Rose, but um, just ended up running to a botless because, I mean, if, he, if he's got the response, he's got the response. That's the thing about that uh, game, but I tried to go for it, and it just kind of flopped, which was a bit of a shame, but it happens. Um, so for the side deck, uh, the side deck was actually partially sort of conversion side, 
but with a little bit of uh, hate in it as well. Uh, I actually cited that the uh, double barbaros, so you'll have an understanding about um, other bits and bobs in this side deck just from this. Double Cork Amira Drago, this thing was fucking amazing against the uh, game two against Burning Abyss. Um, I feel like I want to cut the soul releases from this and side in the um, and side in a couple of lances just to protect this thing because like just wing blasts were the were the bane for this thing so um it's what cost me game three which was a bit of a shame but it is what it is uh two max c uh got this off against burning abyss primarily i believe i cited it in against a couple of the matchups and never saw it um double soul release i saw i, I actually don't believe i saw this once against hieratic ruler matchup and and I think I also saw it. I saw it against Black Wings as well, but I used it as um, fodder for our Scrap Dragons effect. So overall, it was useless. Um, three MST for the hate. Saw those a considerable amount. Uh, one solemn morning, and then the triple skill drain. That's actually the whole reason I built this deck is because I managed to get the third skill drain in, and so. Uh, I wanted to give this deck a run because citing the skill drains is really, really awesome. Um, I believe I saw this only... Having said that, though, I actually only saw the skill drain against the uh, Gravekeeper matchup. I think for the bulk of... I think for a few of the matchups, I cited, I didn't cite it. I know I cited it against Gravekeepers. And I think the only other deck I cited it against was uh, Black Wings. Although, mind you, I actually, cite, I actually put in my entire side deck against uh, Black Wings, all 15 cards, um, because they all had something that could disrupt them, you know, get rid of Synchros, stop Shura from getting any effects, you know, MSTs get rid of Black Whirlwinds and shit, just, it, the, everything in this side deck actually worked against Black Wings, so, why the fuck not? Uh, so it was awesome. Um, so, overall, I was quite content, uh, once again, you know, uh, if I could, I would definitely put that second Lila in there, um, but, I'm not going to complain about the uh, deck's performance, you know. Burning Abyss was never a good matchup for this deck unless I sided. So if I was running something more like a Disaster Dragon, like that one that topped 32 to Regional recently, um, you know, I might have felt like I had a better sort of matchup against um, Burning Abyss because Corka Mira Drago was just so, so powerful, this format, just to get round the shit old matchup and Burning Abyss and Stellanites, and they're just... And it and by definition it gets around a whole bunch of other shit as well, like artifacts and light swans and whatnot, so I was quite content with that card's performance whenever it made its uh appearance. So that is the deck. Uh that would be the end of my deck lists for this current format. The uh next one I'll be doing will probably be the one that I'm doing for the next week's tournament. Uh I can just about confirm as a matter of fact, yeah, I'm not even thinking I'm not even gonna be thinking twice about this. I uh, Elite Beat Hero shall be making a return uh, starting next week because Triple Rota is freaking amazing. And it's been doing relatively well so far. So, uh, yeah, see you for that or the Red Fight if I get to that earlier.